So we've been praying for rain. We got rain. We got flooding rain. We have a storm microburst over us. So there's downpouring. We got rain. Hey, Chris and Larry family. So today I'm gonna take you on a step-by-step -step of how we complete a sign order, um, one of our custom stall sign orders, from start to finish. So follow on our journey and you can see what we do here on our homestead. Okay, so I pulled up our Etsy and we've already cut these um, and this one I've got to get a verification. So we're going to go ahead and start on this very next one right here. Now it says it is a market goat cutout and then I've got the names and the colors on it. So we're going to go ahead and work in Illustrator first and then into the laser machines second. Okay, so because it is a goat, I went ahead and pulled up our goat template. Now I've drawn this already previously so that way i can add my names into it but i've got my market goat and my base sign for this one so let's go back in and whoop wrong one let's start again here go back in and grab the name so we know that the name of the goat is right here boone all of the orders has a personalization section uh, where we have people write their child's name or student's name, their, their livestock shower, the name of their animal, and then the colors that they want. And we've got all different colors, but we've got a John Deere green and a barn red and a, a Ford blue. Uh, these guys want the example just like the photo, so they want the blue. So we're gonna go back into Illustrator here. Now we've got the name Boone, and we're gonna type out that name. And I've got this highlighted really big, just so you know. So all my lines will be very faint um, when I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and copy the name Boone in there. Now, I like to do all caps when it comes to the base names. So I'm gonna go in and change that um, to change case to all uppercase. And we're gonna pull this name up into here. I'm gonna put it right there because that's where I want the top of the name to be. And then I'm gonna pull the name to fit on this sign. And we wanna make it fit nice and neat. Now, if there's lots of names, we'll crush them together and make it one cut um, so that all the letters are touching even in this print. But because this is only a five letter name, it'll be a lot easier to, to put it together. So we're gonna go back in here and we're changing our type to create outlines. And then we're gonna create their outlines here. Okay, and now I'm gonna remove these guys. No, they're not, I guess I should brighten them up for you just like we did the goat. And I'm gonna ungroup because I want each letter individual. Okay. Now we're putting this all on my template. My template has the right size and we can always size it as a whole if we need to for the goat feet to make sure everything fits. But we're sizing this and I'm gonna make this bigger so you can see it. I normally have it that faint for the laser cutter. Okay, so I've got the name Boone now ready to cut out and now we're gonna go grab the student name as well. Okay. So now we grab the student name and do the same thing, only we're gonna put this in a cursive font and we size it on the animal this time. So first let's put the name in and we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna change the font. And I buy all of my fonts, um, so they're all commercial fonts. Hold on here, we're gonna go back. Let's set the camera down. You get a good view of my 
organized shelf there behind the camera for a second, behind the computer. Okay, so we're just gonna size it, and I want it sized evenly. Now, what I also do is I, um, most of the time our names are on at a slight angle because we can make the names a wee bit bigger. Okay, so now let's get a little closer here. So on the name now, we do the same thing where we change to create outlines. Now, because it's they're all individual letters, they overlap. So we've got to go over here onto the computer and change its shape mode and combine. Now you can see they're single entities. So again, go up and change its lines so you, that it's no longer solid black, that it's just the outline. There it is. And then again, we're gonna ungroup these. Oop, come back. Ungroup so that my two names, I can move around separately because I wanna make sure that they fit on our screen. Um, it's definitely a lot harder to do when you're holding a camera, guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, and let's go ahead and turn this one. So now we've got our template completed of this particular sign. Okay, so we've got all the pieces. We've got the animal name, the animal they wanted a goat. There's its hanging tag that goes underneath. And then we've got the student name. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight all these because I don't want the... the outlines to be these huge outlines. I don't want to confuse the laser machine. So we're going to go ahead and make everything light again. So like I said, real hard for you guys to see, but it's all there on the screen still. Now I'm going to go into my system and save this. And we're going to save it as an SVG file. Now when I save, as you can see, I have lots. These are all past orders that are all caught up on. We're gonna save it, I save it as the date, so I know what it is, and then I save it as whatever the last name, whether it was the animal or the student, and then at the very end, I write the, the type of animal in all caps. So that way I can grab it easier and I know exactly which one. So right here, we've got it today's date and the word the name plus the word goat in all caps and we're going to save this in our system all right now i'm going to go prep the laser machine now all right you guys well one thing i did not show you is we do pick up our wood um we have it cut from uh eight foot by four foot into two foot by four foot squares or rectangles and bring that back from the the uh, hardware store and then I hand cut it down um, because it's just easier to fit in my Jeep when I have them cut it down to those those two by fours. So what we end up doing is we cut down to a 20 inch by 12 inch square and then we have strips that we use for Christmas ornaments and other things. So right now my Glowforge, I have a Glowforge, is one of our, our lasers. Um, it's prepping itself. It's going through its signaling process. It's making sure that it's connecting to the Glowforge system and getting all of its uh, functionality ready. So I've got my piece of wood. We use a thin plywood. It's called Revolution Ply. It's the plywood that I like to use for our signs, um, especially for our stall signs, because it's real easy for the kids to carry. And it looks like the Glowforge is all set. Now I clean my Glowforge. I wipe it down daily, which it needs to be wiped down still today. But then once a week, I take it apart and I clean out the fans and all that. So I put my wood in. So I'll show you guys here. So I've got my wood in. Ignore the dust. Like I said, I have to wipe it down still today. So my wood is loaded. Now we're going to go back into the Glowforge app and we're going to load in the design that we just created. Okay, so I'm in our Glowforge app. This is where we load all of our designs to communicate with our machine. So first I'm going to hit new design here. All right, so there's a picture of the wood we just put in. Now, 
on my camera it looks curved and it's only because I'm using um, our GoPro and it's got a little curved lens in there so it's not I promise it is straight on the screen so we're gonna import our artwork hit import and there's the one we just created okay so it's loading all of our artwork now you can see there's red outlines and there are orange outlines the red outlines mean that we don't quite fit onto the screen. So we're just gonna take all of the design and size it down just a hair. And then we're gonna bring it down. We're gonna make sure everything is fitting in here. And we can rearrange this too. That's not an issue if I need to, to make sure that all of my letters are fitting. We wanna, when we reduce size, we want to make sure we reduce the whole thing at the same time because we fit the animal name to the plaque and we fit the student name to the animal cutout. We want to make sure that everything sizes down proportionately together. Now over here, there's different cut modes. Okay, so I've got the base wood or basswood, excuse me, plywood, which is the best cut for this wood. I've got the holes in the plaque this is not a cut however we want to score that those are the lines in the plaque we want that plaque to have those lines and then the next one now I go into my preset for my cut I have animal signs and this is what I want to cut those as okay so now we should be all set all of our pieces are lit up they're all ready to go there's nothing in the red and we're gonna, um, and we've got the purple ones, which right here are the lines. It's real hard to see and I apologize. And we're gonna go up here to this top corner over here and hit the ready print. And it's preparing our print. Now my machine, if you can hear it, just started up. And it is taking pictures and getting the lens ready and it's preparing our print. And this will take a couple of minutes, you guys. So what this will do is it'll give me exactly the time that it's gonna take to cut so that I can get ready. It just shifted, it took a picture, an actual picture of the board. So it shifted, everything still looks good. All the words are in, in the board. Now, sometimes when it does that, it will shift just a little bit and an edge of a letter will be off and you just hit cancel and you move your letters around just a hair. Now, if you can see, it says highlighted area must uh, may be damaged. It has right here in the letter P a highlighted little spot. I don't know if you can see that little yellow spot. That's not an issue. Um, there are some times where it highlights them up and you just kind of check and see what would happen. It's where the laser will go over it a second time. It's because there's a small hole right there in the cursive P and it will be perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the continue button. It says it's gonna take 27 minutes to cut this particular sign. So we are going to go back to the machine and set it off. All right, so I'm standing at the machine right now. It's all loaded and ready. Um, we vented outside. We've got a vent that goes outside because we don't want that smoke blowing back into the house um, or into the studio here. I've got other projects right here that are already cut. Those were the ones that I showed you on the screen that we've already done. These all get to get painted this morning as well. And the Glowforge is ready. It's got one button and that is it. So we're going to push it.
Okay, so all of our time is up on the laser cutting and I'm just gonna pull the piece out so you can see that this is, is the garbage piece and we there's not much room left on there. We cut a lot of that wood. Now all of these pieces are gonna go outside with me onto a tray and we're gonna paint them the colors that the customer requested. Okay, so I've got four separate orders laying out here on my table. Uh, the one that we just cut was for the, the Market Goat Boon. So I've pulled up my four orders. I print them on the same labels that I do my shipping, um, my shipping labels that I do through uh, Pirate Ship. So I actually print up my invoices on this. It's written really small, so I go through and I just rewrite white goat, blue sign, white pig, blue sign, white lamb, red sign, and white goat, red sign. So I have them all written out. Now I know that Boone is the top one because I print them up backwards, um, because that's how I read them in the machine. And I've got this set out. So we know that it's going to be a white goat, we know that the name is gonna be in black, so I'm setting that to the side. There's my goat. And we know that these letters need to be white. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and lay out all of the signs. And we know that this one is gonna be blue. Now, all of my signs, let's see. The goat ones are the same size and the pig is a little bit bigger and the sheep is a little smaller. So we're gonna go ahead and do them one at a time then. I wanted to make sure. Now I'm gonna paint and I use, um, we double coat spray paint and then we put a clear and I think I have to go grab a new clear um, on each of these. So let's get started with our paints. We had a crazy, tremendous storm last night at my house. So I'm grabbing paint. I have it uh, sitting up behind. Let's double check that color real quick. That one is white. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just just coat each of these. What I'm gonna do is finish up this first coat and then I'm just gonna lay this down to dry. And then once it's dry, we'll do a second coat on that one. Now I know that Boone wanted the blue sign. So I've got my Ford blue, pretty awesome color. This is why when you guys see me in videos, my fingers are always colored. I like to spray paint out rather than down, except for my letters. This again, I'll get a second coat here. So make sure the first coat is even and thin there. Okay, now we know that the name needs to be in, in um, the animal name needs to be in white, and we know that the student's name needs to be in black. Again, we'll be doing a second coat and then a clear coat on top. Now, I do all of my painting outside. Um, I try not to do it when it's terribly windy, but I do... Um, if I have a lot that I'm doing, I do wear a mask so that I'm breathing better while I'm doing this. But because I'm outside and the wind's just slightly blowing, we're good right now. Okay, so there's the name is in black. The animal name is in white. The first coat of each of these are done. And then we're going to go on to the next animal.
All right, so I've gotten everything painted, including myself. And what's gonna happen now is I'm just gonna let them sit and dry. Everything's been double coated. I'm gonna come back here in about 15 or 20 minutes or so because we have no humidity. We'll have a little today, but normally no humidity. So everything dries very, very quickly. And I'm gonna spray everything with a quick clear coat over the top. And then we start assembling. Okay, Chris and Larry family, so I'm back in my studio. Everything is dry. I clear coated it. I didn't show doing that because that's kind of boring. Um, So I've got my labels. There's the four signs that we were working on this morning. Um, and we actually received an order for 17 more signs today. Um, it's a 4-H group. So we're going to be crazy busy working. But we're gonna go ahead and put these four together so that we can get them to the post office today. So the first one was a white goat blue sign. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab those out of my box. My box is sitting right down here. So here's the white goat. There he is. So we're gonna pull that out. So we're gonna pull the blue sign base, the name of the animal out find the right one here it's this one so now we've got our blue base and that's got a little stick to it still so we're gonna let that dry a little bit longer here now this animal's name this was the boon yeah boon that we had done so I'm gonna pull those letters out of this box as well I use soda pop case boxes is what I end up using um to paint in and I paint until my box is thick and sticky and I get a new box. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here. We're gonna angle this camera down a little bit so you can see. So I've just gone ahead and put the, the letters on. Okay, like so there's still a little tackiness to that, which is fine. We'll just let that continue to air dry. Now I always lay out all of my words ahead of time. I want to make sure that before I start gluing that I've got the right spacing in here. And we use for the words we use um, the Gorilla Super Glue that's good for wood and other projects. We use that because I want to make sure that those letters are staying on there and I just line kind of walk around my letter. And then I give it um, a minute to dry just a hair because I wanna make sure that it is ready to stick. So I've actually got a little too much glue on there. This was an older glue bottle, so. Just hold that one to the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that on there. And then we go through the process and do all of the letters. Like so. get this to go through today. There it goes. I leave enough, um, make it big enough where if a parent needs to pull it off and retie, they can um, to fit their animals a stall for their kids.
pull this through here. Actually cut this one a little bit short this time. Okay, so there's the first part here. I'll tie it up. And then I've got two, they're about four and a half, five inches long. So I cut those, let's move my computer mouse out of the way. And then we add our animal here, add our animal sign here. And what I do is I go through one side and then I pull through the other and then tie those together. So like I said, we do this on every sign. Everything is handmade. There's, besides the, the cutting of the letters, um, which is still considered handmade because we are uh, designing everything ahead of time on the computer. Um, but everything gets tied on here. Got my other string here. Same thing on this side. And then we're gonna let this one sit while I tie the other three and I won't bore you with the tying of the other three and then we'll start packing up to ship today I want this one to sit out just a little bit longer anyway because it is a little bit tacky still and we don't want it to get stuck to bubble wrap or anything else I want to make sure that it's completely dry I have found that that blue Ford truck paint and the John Deere green that we get the farm colors it's actually those are the names of the colors um it takes a little bit longer for those to dry than some of the other paints that we've got okay so this sign is tied and ready now some signs that we do have chalkboard bases some of them have no bases so we take the holes out of them and just have the the child's name if it's just that then we tie a little a little collar out of the the jute around um we also have ones that are tags with the animals cut out so we have a variety of ones we also do the states every state we we have a one that we can cut the state and put the child's name on the state and the animal at the bottom We've also done awards for 4-H groups where there is no animal name where it says such and such 4-H or FFA group um, at the bottom so that kids can have that and they just have their animal and their name at the top. So there you go. So that's the process of creating and now we're gonna mail. All right, you guys, so the sign is ready to go. Now I've already boxed up three others as you can see. Those were the other three that we painted this morning so far. Um, and basically I have big rolls and this is the end of this roll of bubble wrap and I just pull a handful off of it. Let's find the seam here, right there. And I wrap each part of the sign individually. I wanna make sure that it gets there safe. So we wrap the base sign and then we just turn it and get it all nice and wrapped up. And we're sticking it into a, this particular sign into an 11 and a half by 12 and a half by two and a half box. Um, if someone uh, purchases priority shipping, then we end up doing the priority shipping for them. Um, if not, we send them first class. I've already taped up my box. I'm just gonna put a quick piece of tape on here. This is my box here. And these drop right down in. We can wrap up. It fits perfect in these boxes. I throw in one of our Chris and Larry stickers. I throw in their invoice with a thank you on it. And then I throw in one of my business cards in every box that goes through. And then we're gonna put some other bubble on um, in here to pad this up and get this taped up. Well, thank you everyone for going on our journey today of how we create one of our custom signs. So I'm in the car. I have boxes upon boxes loaded in the back seat of earrings and signs and tumblers and other things that we have coming off of our homestead. 
uh, farm shop that we have. Um, but you have now seen from start to finish. So we head to the post office now and they are on their way. We will see you in the next video. Like, share, subscribe. I have a kid coming in the car, yay! Like, share, subscribe, ring a bell. Turn on notifications. What do you say, Grayson? Hi. Hi, we got lots of boxes going to the post office, huh? All right, here we go. We'll see you later, my friends. Thank you.